Hi there folks, welcome back to Rich Reviews. It's a Friday again folks, another documentary. Don't worry, this will be the last one for a bit. I'll be trying to get you more films folks, more obviously wide releases and obviously some independent stuff. Uh, otherwise, documentaries are largely going to be done here for a bit. Nobody Speaks, The Trial of the Free Press. This is written and directed by Brian Naffenberger. This movie takes a look at the fourth estate in the, in the era of plutocratic friendly America and the results of what this film shows you is rather sobering, or at least that's what the movie wants to show you, obviously. this Now, this movie t shows you three different stories about how the free press is being mu muzzled by, you know, high-priced lawsuits and how the press cannot be trustworthy in the age of Trump, I guess. The first part of this film here involves the lawsuit of between Terry Bollea, you know, a.k.a. Hulk Hogan, and Gawker. And this is obviously when Hogan sued Gawker because they released a sex tape of him, his best friend's wife, and it was, you know, obviously released on Gawker, then TMZ and it was picked up elsewhere, and, you know, Hogan was steaming mad, and what Hulk Hogan's lawyers are trying to f frame here is the fact that, yes, Terry Bollea, the person, is different than Hulk Hogan, the character. Now, of course, he was also suing his friend as well because of that sex tape, and, now, of course, during a trial, Obviously, they, Gawker realizes, oh yeah, there's a second sex tape out here. And this one basically shows Hulk Hogan in a racist rant that cost him his goodwill ambassadorship with the WWE, basically. And of course, they weren't allowed to show you that at trial, or the jury wasn't allowed to at the very least. Clearly, should this have been Gawker's lawsuit to win? I don't honestly know, but first of all, the trial here was a, a disadvantage to Gawker in the first place because they held the trial in South Florida, that's where Hogan lives, obviously. And honestly, the second, another hindrance was the fact that this judge was the lawyer for the Terry Schiavo case, which isn't that amazing for, you know, a media frenzy in general. The judge here, you know, lambasted the elite media in the opening minutes of the trial, basically. It doesn't help the fact that, yeah, the Gawker people are from New York and they're coming down the South Florida here. Of course, Nick Denton here is interviewed. He's the head of Gawker, and you know, he's unabashedly ashamed of the fact that, yes, I posted a Hulk Hogan sex tape here, folks. And again, I'm proud of the muckrake journalism we've been doing it, because that's what muckrake journalism has been all about. Gawker knew that they were going to lose the case, in which one of the deposition tapes has by this other journalist who works for them. In this deposition, he's asked a question that is so boneheaded, you obviously think, how in the world could this person answer it? And the question that revolves around how a young is too young to realize his sex tape with someone. And his answer is yes, it's boneheaded. The guy is crucified in the you know online press for it. And he obviously says during trial that's obviously a, a stupid answer to give. Now obviously he answers it in such a way that's half joking, half serious, but that doesn't make it even better at all. Obviously, Hogan wins the the lawsuit or his award hundred forty million dollars. Gawker then goes bankrupt. And, or, you know, files for bankruptcy protection, and Hogan and Gawker eventually settle for $30 million. During a trial, Gawker obviously wonders, who is financing this lawsuit for Hogan? Because Hogan, you know, obviously was going through money troubles at the time. Gawker comes to realize that, oh yeah, Peter Thiel is funding, is funding the lawsuit here. Now, who is Peter Thiel? Well, he is a billionaire Silicon Valley person. He founded PayPal. He was an early investor of Facebook. He, he, and Gawker outed him as gay, even though everyone in Silicon Valley kind of knew that he was gay. But that enraged Pierre Thiel, and it's like, Gawker! 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 And he's been wanting his revenge ever since, and he finally got it. And he's also an Ayn Rand libertarian of the most extremist type. It's, you know, there's also that Thiel Fellowship you often hear about is where he says, Okay, I'll fund your research of a project if you drop out of school. He wants to create independent cities out in the middle of the ocean, which is like, wow, that's bizarre. You know, now the, the other part, now the good, the rest of the chunk of this film here involves Sheldon Allison and Donald Trump. Now, now who is Sheldon Allison if you don't know who he is? Well, he's a rich Republican billionaire who has been donating to various Republican causes over the years. He also bought the Las Vegas Journal Review, or his family did. Now, people who were at the well, the biggest journal review were obviously stunned when they were being told that they were being sold. 
Now, of course, the people at the paper try to figure out who has bought the paper, and they come to realize, oh yeah, it's the son-in-law of Sheldon Allison. One of the more funnier, one of the more interesting things about the Sheldon Allison Las Vegas Journal Review story is that one of the guys wrote a book years back, and when she mentioned Shell Allison, and Shell Allison took offense to what this guy said, he sued him for libel, and obviously he decided, you know, okay, I'm gonna fight back here. <laughs> now, the guy's daughter was going through a cancer battle at the time, and what does Sheldon Allison do? He sends out a rabbi, and this rabbi tells him that Sheldon Allison will pay his daughter's medical expenses if he publicly admits in court that he libeled Sheldon Allison. Now, as you're hearing this, you're thinking to yourself, Wow, it takes balls to actually do this in a, in a hospital. And the guy basically says, Well, if I settled, then I would have been searching for another profession, obviously. And basically, of course, then when Allison buys the newspaper, this guy realizes, Yeah, it's time for me to quit because he realizes, it, considering that Allison bought the paper, that anything he, they say negatively about Allison will, will have negative consequences against them. Now, of course, we get to Donald Trump, who has routinely bashed the media ever since day one of his presidential campaign. Now, of course, Trump wants to make it easier for people to sue people for a libel, to make it easier and have, you know, obviously rich billionaires come down on journalists and basically drown them in lawsuits. As John Oliver from last week night has pointed out, Donald Trump has been involved in like over like 1,100 lawsuits over the years. And if you add all the episodes of your favorite lawyer shows from over the years, you still be a couple dozen short, <laughs> if you can believe it. Now, obviously, this movie wants to point out that there's a red alert going on when it comes to the state of journalism. And guess what? I don't doubt that. But here's the thing, folks. The, the news media kind of <laughs> created Trump. When it comes to news media, yeah, they're kind of on their last legs because, you know, online media is beginning really has been gaining ground. Media, now obviously print media has done a better job since Trump took office calling out his lies. You know, his media basically on TV has called out Trump's lies, you know, saying alternative facts are not facts. I'm, again, I'm hopeful that the free press can remain free and objective from the influences of billionaires. Is it gonna take a while? Yes, because it's gonna take everything the media has got. Yes, I do believe that we are on the road to at least having the media get its credibility back. Is, is this, I think this is a relatively good, but not particularly great documentary, because I think the Hulk Hogan stuff could have been in its own film. You know, the state of journalism overall with Allison you know, and Trump, could have been, that could be its own film, just right there. But I think overall this film is rather good. And folks, what I'm going to say, Nobody Speaks, Trials of the Free Press, is a matinee rating, as I said, Previously, it's out on Netflix. It's out online anywhere you want to find it. Go go watch it. Be in awe and in horror. So, folks, what do you think about Nobody Speaks: The Trials of the Free Press? Did you happen to like it? Did you happen to care for it at all? If you if you didn't care for this film at all, please tell me why you didn't care for this film in the comment box below. Or what's your favorite movie about the media in general? So, folks, like, comment, subscribe, and enrich yourself of knowledge. If you want to see this handsome face again, click the subscribe button. I'm, I, I love to comment with you down below, folks. I'll see you next time, folks.